So I'm Luca Delattre, teaching at Institut Français de la Mode. Let's talk about communicating in 2020. And the reason why I've chosen this image is maybe you can, you, you can figure out what I have in mind. Talking about communication, what is the point for you? In a broad sense. You have everything in this image. I found it in Beijing uh, last year in the flea market. A nice, very nice album of uh, Tintin in Chinese. So when you communicate with, with somebody, you send a message and the person receives the message, but probably he will receive it in a false sense. Uh, probably he will not understand, hence the Chinese. Um, communicating is a very, very complicated uh, issue in uh, human matters. I'm sure you experience it every day, <laughs> or maybe every hour. <laughs> Um, for example, here I'm trying to communicate some messages. I will try to be clear, but if I'm not clear, please ask. The first point was a reality which is a basis of human relationships, but nowadays you have this all the more because people are flooded with information and they look. Do you know how many times you look at your uh, mobile every day? Several hundreds, yes. And some young people, but not, not only young people, it's even more. So it's very difficult to say something and to be heard. It's almost impossible in actual conditions. Uh, do you know George Bernard Shaw? Uh, he was a playwright, uh, uh, writer, uh, 150 years ago in, uh, in the UK. And he said this, which I think is very, very... True, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. And uh, more recently, a lady who is uh, leading the communication department at NG, which is an energy, um, a big company in France, said that 40% of the content you produce digitally is not read by anyone. So, how many emails do you receive every day? How many unseen emails do you have in your archive? I have 20,000 and more, so everybody. People spend two seconds on average looking on mobile feeds, ads, uh, for example, ads from Procter & Gamble, but it's the same with everybody. Procter & Gamble is one example among others, even Chanel. So um, behind this, you have something which we experience in a broad sense in politics every day, but maybe also in love affairs, uh, trust and, and uh, confidence is really, really, really hard to obtain, even more than before, because we are open to everything and every message. I love this chart, uh, and I advise you to follow the World Economic Forum on, the, on Facebook or on the, on the social net, uh, networks. They, they have good contents, good day. They summarize good uh, reports and they have, uh, they have an ability to summarize things uh, in a good way. So the, the, person, the typical person in the Western world today is now exposed to as much data in one day as someone in the 15th century would have seen in their lifetime. So you know that, we know that, but it's good to share it again and again. So that's the situation. Uh, maybe you know that theory of information defined by Claude Shannon in the 40s, and it has become more and more valid today. When information is cheap, attention becomes expensive. Do you experience it? Do you know that we live in a so-called attention economy? Is that familiar to you? The basis of the value today is the part of, of the brain people are able to give to you. If it's two seconds, it's already good. But it has a big value. In that context, advertising is dead, probably. And I love the cartoons of the New Yorker. For example, these old, or oh, old, maybe more than 50 years old. It's not very old. <laughs> Saying, I used to be in advertising. Remember, buy this, you morons. That was mine. So, so this is. This is fini. 
And how to achieve this effect, that's, is, that's I think, the basis of every uh, communication effort. How do you do that? What do you try to obtain? How do you, in your different brands, experience the, that effort? Two, in two words, to say something. And to summarize what I do with the students at IFM, I try to enable them to say something. It seems to be easy. Huh? Seems to be very easy. It's very, very difficult. Say something which will be read, understood, and which will reach the attention of your, let's say, consumers, because we are in fashion. So how do you, how do, you do that? When you see that image, what do you think? It's an old thing. It's about propaganda. It's about the ability to bring people's attention to your message, to your object, to your product. Who has this ability today? Who can achieve that? Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg has Facebook, he has WhatsApp, he has uh, Instagram. He's the, he's the king of today's world, really. He, he's, he's more powerful than anybody, except maybe in certain geographical zones, uh, Putin or Xi Jinping. Or... OK. So how? Do you obtain superiority in information? What are the tools? So everybody uses uh, Facebook or, or Instagram to advertise. Look at this. So this is a head of, a head of state, quasi. Today's m biggest valuations in Wall Street are uh, the gay fan, huh? are the let's say, social networks, but it's more than that. It's, it's more than that. It's not only social networks. But what is Amazon? What is Google? What is Facebook? What do they have in common? Except saying that they are called GAFA or GAFAM. How would you summarize that? Hmm? Data giants, yes. They control the data. The, they are the... Netflix is part of it, too. They are the... Um, the gatekeepers of every information, image, data. If you are not in, in, in this world, you quasi you do not exist for others. You exist for yourself, which is very important. <laughs> but, OK, so Snapchat has more value than Carrefour or Renault. Did you know that? It's interesting. Yeah? When you stumble upon something like that, you say, hey, interesting. So talking about information, what you as brands deliver is that information or something else. That's the reason why I've put here a, a heart. As fashion brands, emotions. And what is the link between uh, uh, information and emotions? Mm -hmm. Yes. So with a good information, I can attract your attention, which is the goal. We, everybody is OK with that. Yes or not? But emotions are even more powerful. And that's the reason why, why fashion is so, so big, so big an in industry. So how to achieve emotions, except with some beautiful cats, which everybody loves. And it's a tool which has not to be underestimated, because cats are very important, and, uh, and animals. I spent a few minutes every day looking at uh, wild animals fighting each other, or like a cat fighting a, a snake. It's fascinating. And I cannot escape it. Instagram brings it to me. I don't know how he knows that uh, it, they know that it will interest me, but in fact, I, I dedicate some minutes to that every day. How do you obtain the attention of your client knowing that he needs, it's an hypothesis, he needs information, and he needs more and more, more than information, he needs to be moved. It's, you know, it's the classical part of uh, ancient rhetorics. It's uh, moving people, inform them, um, interest them. It, these are the basis of, it's, it was the same 2,500 years ago, but now we have other tools. So if I have an, an image like that, for example, how can I, be sure that people will be interested. For example, you. 
I know that with some words, I will gain your attention by making you what? Yes, surprise. But the, f the first emotion is, is which one? Laughter. Laughter, yes. And if you know how to use words, like, for example, this guy, I will what I will show you, I would have loved to invent it, to be able to invent it, you know. It's very hard. It's, it's spirit. Okay. So, it's, it's less than two seconds. But you are there. You look at it. And you will share it. If something can be shared, you won. And this has been shared a thousand times. This guy, this guy is a friend. Nobody met him. He's a graphic designer in Sheffield in, in the UK. And the opposite, sorry to, uh, to go from laughter to tragedy. The story of, um, of uh, Belgian Congo, you know the story. Uh, it's, we are in France. I could have taken a French example, but uh, it's it, nothing against Belgium, but the story of Belgian Congo has been a huge tragedy. Yeah? And uh, a photographer, this lady, Alice Sile Harris, probably achieved more to end the colonial rule of Belgium on Congo than any other political person because of emotions with pictures like that. Sorry to share this, but emotions are covering all the scope of what we feel. Do you know that person? He, he had quite a big influence on the 20th century, and sometimes he said very interesting things. Who's that? This is Joseph Stalin. Yes. This is Joseph Stalin <laughs> before he became before he became well known. At the time he was he was a burglar in Georgia. He yes, he, he was a, a, a kind of a mafia uh, member in, in, in Georgia. A ni nice guy. And he said among interesting th things he said, he said this. The death of a person is a tragedy. The death of a million persons is a statistic. So I advise you, communicating around your products, to think about how you scenarize something. You need to know how to write a story. And how to write a story is to read literature. Forget about advertisement, about advertisement culture. It's, it's really important, but the, the rules the rules are in Aristoteles, the ancient masters of thought and spirit, Aristoteles, Cicero, Pericles, and people who knew how to convince an audience to go to war. <laughs> and look at how they did. St Stalin had no democracy behind him, but he knew to. And uh, look at how people do films. And to obtain the attention to say something, you know what Somerset Mogam said about writing a novel? There are three rules to write a, no a good novel. And when I say that, you listen to me. And he said, the problem is nobody knows them. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, every day, I experience the fact with my students, and I'm, I'm very happy because one of my students understood that two days ago. You say something, and people will not listen to what you say, but to how you say it. And one student of mine, two days ago, he came with his group and he said, this is what we will do, what, what we will do next uh, Friday, tomorrow. We will do, first we will do that, second we will do that, third we will do that. Ah, okay. <laughs> I don't remember what he said, but he was there. <laughs> he was present and he catch my attention by saying, I will tell you that. <laughs> So think about the basic rules of storytelling, and there are many books uh, about that, but the best is to read Balzac, to read Tolstoy, to read the... And behind this, in our world of fashion, there is a big shift in the way brands uh, do marketing. The concept on the right is the, the, the former guy here, 
this, this guy. That's outbound marketing. I tell you something and you have to listen. But the first thing you have in mind, and I won't listen to him, why? Who are you to, to talk to me? Are you talking to me? <laughs> so I have to know what will move you from inside. What are your obsessions, your basic emotions, your profound thoughts? And this is, this is good news because uh, communicating is more interesting now than before. Because it's more broad, more wide, more human, in a, in a sense, should be. It's not, not always the case, but you can do it. You can try to do, to do it. You can use the email, okay, but as we saw, people will not open your newsletter, except if your title is very interesting. And that's the reason why some brands like Frischti, for example, they use, but they overuse uh, the basic rules of capturing your attention by saying, for example, did you experience Frischti, an email from Frischti? Do you open them? You open, you open them because, because you are angry at 11 a.m. or 12 a.m. and they know how to tell you, maybe, I don't remember, but um, they know how to make you laugh. But being in fashion, it's not easy to make people laugh because your product is not necessarily ad adapted to that. So forget it, but email, if you, use, if you know how to, to formulate uh, a, a good header, you, you will achieve something. Blogging, web pages, social, SEO, search engine optimization. Talking about SEO now, it's only, you know, it's, it's a huge thing. <laughs> uh, around SEO, you have thousands and thousands of companies, small companies, startups, big, big companies who, who know how to help you and who will make you pay for enhancing your visibility on the web. It's, it's a part of today's economy. It's a, pillar of the attention economy we are talking about. Analytics, analytics means that you know how many people have opened your emails, how many people have reacted to your post, and so on, and so on. Maybe you know who is this uh, Jan Rogers. He's the head of the digital department of uh, the group, LVMH. And he said a few months ago, the storytelling equals the margin of your brand. A brand's ability to tell a story it is what makes it valuable. And in a sense, this is a definition of, of what, it, uh, what is called the économie de l'immatériel in French, the immaterial economy. We, in France, for example, the textile industry has been lost 30 years ago. The production has been given over to Asia. What stays here is this, the ability to establish a brand, to communicate around it, to conceive the good product, and so on and so on. Nowadays, industry is coming back a little bit. It's changing. But in the last 30 years, that's the basis of our economy. I love this cartoon. I will uh, read the text because it's small. But this lady is, is in a Walmart kind of or Carrefour. I don't know. None of these cookies offer an engaging brand narrative. <laughs> so, in a sense, we are made out of stories, and people love sto stories. And if I tell you a story, you will listen. Il était une fois. Everybody listens because you want to know. We are all stories. So, among many other uh, methods, think about. Uh, uh, some fundamental tools to, to, to write a story around your product. It's written here, creative juices, distilled happiness, acidic wit, extract of genius. It says nothing, but it's fun. But there is something which is very, very important here. One bottle, the only one, I would say. It's suspension of disbelief. Do you know that concept? If you go to see a film, your disbelief is totally suspended. You believe, for example, let's take um, Parasite, the film who has won five, five Oscars or four or five Oscars. Everybody saw it? So you, many of you saw it. You, you buy the story. You are in it. It's, it's totally, probably totally unrealistic, but you are in it and you don't think one second that it is not realistic. 
you, your disbelief is totally suspended because, because the guy knows how to tell you a story. Go to see the film and think about how you will do something around your product, kind of inspired by these basic rules of uh, telling a story. So emotions, emotion wins against thinking always, always, and always. Everybody is entitled to invent Chinese proverbs. Uh, do you agree with that? I have a good one. I don't know if it's, if it's true, but I share it often with uh, the students of IFM about what is the truth. What is the truth? If you, product, if you have a product, everybody has a brand here, huh? you have a product. That's the truth. You know the product has a cost, it, it, has, uh, uh, it has to be um, brought from overseas, it, uh, you know every part of the, the real aspect of it. But talking about the truth, and that's the problem, there, there are three truths. The first truth is my truth, the second truth is your truth, and the third truth is the truth. And this is very profound. I, I, th I think about it almost every day. <laughs> For example, Trump and the impeachment. The truth is, yes, he has done something which can be uh, seen as illegal with uh, the Ukrainian president. That's the truth. But his truth is that he did nothing false. And the truth of the Democrats is, is, is uh, that he should be charged with it. At the end, who won? The truth of Trump won, because he said, I'm, I'm the president, and forget about it. Huh? So um, I, won't, I would not say that uh, the reality does not exist, which, which is a philosophical tradition here in the last 40, 50 years, that everything has been deconstructed, even the truth. The truth exists, does exist. And as uh, entrepreneurs, you know, you know that. It's your money. <laughs> but uh, this is one part of it. Your truth, and probably more important, what people have in mind, that's the important thing. And that's the reason why politics is so complicated. Intelligence is everywhere. A, a bit less in politics because it's the most complicated things. Think, to share sense around important things. Emotions have the last say. And fashion is an industry which is based on emotions. Huh? Totally, totally, totally. Yes, that's Sidney Toledano, uh, formerly head of uh, Dior, now head of the fashion group of LVMH. Fashion is about creativity, but also and maybe foremost about people and emotions. That's, that's what he says to our students. Uh, he comes very often to talk to the students of IFM, at least once in a year. And, so. and more important, emotion is as the basis of creative brands. You've listened to what uh, Robin just said. Creative driven markets are... are demand-driven markets. Fashion and luxury are based on creativity, so it's the creator, the designer, who decides it's what will be sold and not uh, what you need. Fashion is not about needs. And François-Henri Pinault, I've noticed this uh, two years ago, said that the rational discourse of luxury is good. This is the truth. Huh? So, for example, yes, I've produced this product in, in Italy, it's real luxury. Okay, that's part of the story. But it doesn't speak to the brains of millennials. It is necessary to create desire and dreams to accentuate the emotional and creative content. For example, through persons like Kim Kardashian, which is astonishing for me because I don't understand why Kim Kardashian is so... <laughs> a dream <laughs> of, of some lifestyle, but okay, it works. Make your brand as emotional as possible. That's an advice of uh, the CEO of Coach during a festival by Business of Fashion a few, few months ago. And the master of uh, storytelling, if, if you think about it, one of the big masters is this person. 
Do you know the story of uh, his uh, campaign uh, motto of 2008, fired up, ready to go? Have you, uh, have you seen this on uh, YouTube? If you are interested in it, tape it in YouTube and look at the, the way he created the story around that. In a big meeting, in big meetings he, he used that. He said, one day it was raining, I had no envy to go to a meeting in North Car South Carolina. I was invited to talk to a, a very small democratic uh, um, a, a club. I had to, to, to be driven two hours under the rain. I was sick, but the lady had told me, I will support you if you come to talk to my constituents in my small town. He, he comes to a, a, a room like this, and 20 people only are there. And he's very unhappy because he has many other things to do. And all of a sudden, the lady says to the, to the audience, fired up, and everybody says, fired up. And after that, she says, ready to go. And everybody says, ready to go, and it becomes a song. And now if you, if you type fired up, ready to go, not only it has become the motto of Obama in 2008, but it has become a, a song with remixes and so on. It's around that story. And the New York Times wrote a piece about that. And the, interestingly, the last paragraph of that article said that he had invented this before. <laughs> but what counts is the story. <laughs> That's what people have in mind. Another example is about Obama. To stay awake, the president was said to, uh, to eat almonds after his meetings around midnight or 1, 1 a.m. And not almonds, but seven almonds. Why seven almonds? And that's, that's the very basis of storytelling. And for example, sometimes I ask my students to, to talk about, uh, to, to make a portrait of another student. Please write an uh, a piece about you and, and write a piece about this lady. You, you have one hour. And after one hour, they read the text and so And two young students said, we, we didn't have time to write after one hour. OK, but let's go, go, go ahead. And the first, we are 20 in the room. And the first, she was called, her name was Noemi, said about Farah. The second was Farah. She likes to read. OK, very boring. She likes to go to the movies. Wow, very, very boring. Uh, she has a brother. <sighs> the brother has a kid. Uh, Farah doesn't love, do, doesn't love uh, uh, small kids. Why? What? What? What is it? What is it? <laughs> and all of a sudden, everybody's there. So you capture the attention of people by creating attention around things. Attention. Why seven almonds? It's nothing but seven. Why seven? All of a sudden, people ask. And it's all the time seven. Hmm? Interesting. So, look, the farewell address, it's not, an, it's not a political statement, it's a, it's a Hollywood film. So give people candies to eat. And candies can be, and coming back to informations, I have a good information and I know how to encapsulate it to give it to you, because your brand needs food. Your heart needs emotions, your brand needs food. This is uh, Bill Gates tweeting every year what he has learned during uh, the last year because he reads, uh, he says he reads uh, a book a day. And he selects the best information he gathered during the year, at the end of the year. It's kind of a, a gift to his followers. And he said, that was three years ago, the most mind-blowing fact I learned this year, China used more cement, cement in the last three years than the US used in the entire 20th century. And people, if you read that, you never forget it. You never forget it, because you encapsulate a good information, an information which captures something. Europe has so many, had, it was 2015, so many refugees that IKEA was running low on beds and blankets. Wow, and you'll never forget it. This is not about a product. Huh? You will say, what, what can I do with, uh, with uh, we will come back to that, uh, with my product, fashion product. This uh, Salinas on the uh, left side is the head of the police unit 
which came into the Bataclan on the November 13th, 2015. And the day after, or two days after that, he was interviewed uh, on, on the radio, and he said, I could listen to the rings of the cell phones on the dead people. And you listen to that, and you know you will never forget it. Um, how, t how, you, how can you achieve this? It's probably difficult, but uh, it's your job as communicators. Uh, encapsulate a truth and share it. So Maurice Lévy is the kind of a pope of, of uh, advertisement in France for the last uh, 40 years. And this is obvious, but it's always good to share it. Communication is not telling the truth. It's uh, hiding, showing part of something, selecting, and knowing what will, what will attract the attention of people. Macron, it's kind of the same like Obama. He was elected because, of, because he had a good image. He's, he could use the right words, but he knew how to, how to put... This is a, a bottle flip challenge. You know, you take a bottle, and, and you could see that on, on Snapchat, and then you could ask you, but what, what is it? Huh? Why? He spends five minutes to share that with us. It talks to many people. And as you can see, it's an old, old, old thing. Uh, generally, people believe what they want to believe. So give them food, and they will follow you. But please, please uh, escape bullshit, because we, are, we drown in bullshit. This has been the most liked picture on Instagram uh, a few months ago, last year or the year before. Do you know that? Huh? Uh, it was a challenge to, to beat Kylie Jenner. The challenge was to see if this image, which was the most um, favorite image, the most liked image of 2018, the, the, the son of Kylie Jenner, millions and millions, I don't remember how many millions of likes, could be beaten by something totally absurd. And a graphic designer in the UK, they are good, the graphic designers in the UK, um, proposed that egg, and he achieved his goal with 29, uh, 700 and more likes. And after that, what, what can you do? This guy could gather 20 million likes. So many people came to him and said, hey, please help us. <laughs> um, so escape bullshit. For example, here, this is, a, this is a, a brand you probably know, Etam, for the, the 8th of March for the, the day of the, the, the Women's Day, Etam vous offre une culotte. That was supposed to be, to be clever, you know. It's, it's, nowadays, you can, even a few, that was a few years ago, three years ago, it was totally, totally raté. <laughs> but uh, nowadays, if you do that, it's even worse. You will be really, really the, the goal of an, a, a big attack, because it's totally sexist and, and, and so on. So, inform your customers. Um, consumers feel less informed than they would like to, uh, even, um, even more because they want to know what is the quality of the products they buy. Inform them and move them. And to move them, surprise them. And so, I, I think this is very important. A brand must now conquer shares of cultural voices rather than th simply thinking about the distribution of its media expenditure. Media expendi expenditure was the, the world of the advertisement, but nowadays the advertisement doesn't exist anymore. Nowadays you have Facebook, which eats, and Google, they eat. Every new euro in, in advertisement is for them. So you have to find other ways. For example, you, you, you propose some uh, sensitive ideas like that, but it's very dangerous. You know, you know why? I've bought uh, a pair of shoes and a bag at um, a young uh, French brand. I won't, I won't uh, say they, 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 their name. And they promised to, to plant a tree when you buy a, a pair of shoes. The pair of shoes was so bad, and the, the, the bag was even worse. The bag did not survive more than one week. So, if you do that, you have to be really sure about what you do. 
propose some uh, uh, meaningful content, like for example, this is the brand called Gant, and they propose a, a film about uh, a documentary. They produce documentaries that explore the modern world of work, the future of work. What if the next step is in your career isn't up? The film follows three people and features insights from experts on the subject. That's called brand content. Brands are now media. Huh? They behave like media, and they give you some insightful content. I, I don't see any relationships with Ghent, by the way. But if you feel good within the cultural sphere of Ghent, you will probably say, that's a cool brand. That's how it works now. <laughs> and look, that, that was this morning in the Women's Wear Daily Channel is going to host an immersive botanical exhibit in Paris. La beauté sculptive in Le Jardin des Plantes. In France, probably more than in the US, you have no legitimacy if you own a luxury group. Bernard Arnault, for example, is not popular in France. Not at all. This is a revolutionary country. This is an interesting paradox. The country of luxury is also the, culture, the country where money is seen with the most, uh, the biggest distance. But the Fondation Louis Vuitton, when Bernard Arnault organized an exhibition, like the exhibition about Charlotte Perriand, that makes a lot for, his, for the credibility of the brand. And next, in the next months, you will have the Bourse du Commerce with Kering. Marie was here, she knows that by heart. Uh, and now Chanel um, at the Jardin des Plantes, La Beauté Sculptive. That's how you cultivate your brand credibility. Everybody knows Morgane Cesalori from Cezanne, and she recently said tomorrow's fashion brands will not have large advertising and communication budgets. It's not about money, it's, it's about how you uh, create a community around values, around, around emotions, around sense, and information, never forget, information, emotions, and sense. Veja, everybody, you know Veja, huh? the sustainable sneakers in France. The core of their business model is not doing advertisement at all, but they say what they do with Brazil and with, they pay more, and the, 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 the peasants and, and so on. So, instruct your consumer, please them, delectare, and move them. This is the basis of classical rhetorics, and it's still the same today. And for me, this is the most powerful tool in communication today, by far. And I use it every day. Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about you. Even if you are, if you are Chanel, we can discuss. But today's customer is ready to go to, to Zara and to, instead of buying an expensive piece of Chanel, it's fragile. But if I want, uh, this is in English, in order for you to be interested in me, I have to tell you about yourself. If Chanel talks to you about yourself, you will love Chanel. If Chanel speaks about Chanel, but it's maybe not a good example because Ch Chanel, many people love Chanel. But if, if you are Cezanne, if you are a new brand, you don't exist in the mind of people, except if you talk to them about them, not about you. What? What do you like? And what do you say? You, s you said something very interesting to me as a brand. And I will let you know that what you say is very interesting. I love your comment. <laughs> I love your like. <laughs> I like your like. <laughs> and so on and so on. And this is how, how, how you can achieve, for me, the most powerful communication today by uh, letting know, for example, journalists that uh, you have appreciated what they wrote, for example, with Twitter. I, have, I never met uh, Vanessa Friedman, who is the journalist for fashion at the New York Times, but she knows that Institut Francais de la Mode finds that some parts of her articles are very interesting. The third paragraph of your article, I will quote it on Twitter because I find it very interesting. And she knows, ah, Institut Francais de la Mode, they read my articles. They she doesn't care about Institut Francais de la Mode at all as a, as a school, but she knows that 
there is somebody there who follows and who is attentive. Attention, you can share it. That's my view of brand content. Your brand is at the middle. Never talk about your brand. Talk about what is around it. What is around it is, for example, Veja. Veja talks to you about EVA cultivation in Brazil, about the way people live in, in the regions where they, they, they produce their, their sneakers. And create connivence and collusion, which has in English quite a small negative aspect, connivence. It's always against something, a little bit, connivence. It's not totally positive. So we belong to the same club, you know? And that's what, that what makes today's period very difficult because as you, as you know, um, violence is there on the social, social media. The reactions, if you make a faux pas, like Robin said, are not uh, easy to handle. Huh? You are quite, quite uh, quickly considered as somebody who, is, who has not the good values. Huh? You, you, you followed what, what Le Slip Francais had experienced, uh, have experienced in, uh, a few weeks ago. So play, play with your brand. For example, this coffee. Come in and try the worst coffee one woman on TripAdvisor had in her life. If you can play, if you have esprit, you win everything. Is that, isn't that good? That's, that's not bad, huh? It's easy, but that, that's not bad. Do you know Manhattan Mini Storage? <laughs> uh, transform your sad, tiny apartment into an uncluttered, sad, tiny apartment. <laughs> Storing at your parents means having to visit. So, <laughs> so understand the spirit of your, 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 uh, your collectivity, your, your community. Tell them the, the opposite of what you want to tell them. Everybody knows that, that, that campaign, 2011, by Patagonia. This vest is the most sold out vest of the entire history of Patagonia. Because people said, if I don't have to buy it, it, it should be interesting. Tension creates attention. You understand? Why, why do, I, do I have not to buy it? It must be interesting, I will have a look. And this is today in the Metro in Paris, the, the last campaign of Tinder. Have you, have you seen it? The last campaign of Tinder, everybody knows what is Tinder. Tinder is supposed to bring people together. But the last campaign of it, it's today in, in, in Paris, you will see, this is uh, the American version of it. But um, the message is, I want to stay single. Ah, oh, uh, why do I have to use Tinder? So it creates a spark. And, and people will look and say, what is it? And the, the, the law is not there. And they will talk to people, what is it? Did you see that? Yes, it's Tinder. Somebody knows. And, and so you, you create a lack of um, um, clarity. And you, it's, it's, it's not easy. Huh? It can be a fail, but... You create attention by creating attention. And you occupy values without hesitating to do it. Uh, the most interesting example, I have not put it here, but you know Glossier, the, one of the most uh, uh, well-known uh, DNVB uh, of the last month. Glossier has on its website um, a category for, like uh, Allociné in France. You, comment, you, you can give your comment positive or negative about the product on the same level. Positive comments, negative comments. On the, on, the, on the page of the product, can you imagine a CEO of a brand doing that in a meeting and saying, we will do that? But people will, will, will complain, no problem. They will be happy to see that they can complain. And we won't erase it. And here, Gillette was very much criticized last year by, after Me Too, by criticizing the toxic masculinity very hardly. They, lo they, they have lost a lot of consumers, but they have gained more. The same with Nike, with this uh, player 
who was very exponent in his, in his um, critical uh, uh, attitude against uh, police violence in the US. You know, at the beginning of every match he, he, he need. And, and when Nike did that, there was a hashtag called Boycott Nike, but it was scrutinized by many, um, um, many, many observers, but Nike won. Nike won more than he lo it, it lost, and the value in, uh, in Wall Street went high. So, sorry it's in French, but to summarize and to come to an end, because it's, it's time, uh, this period is very contradictory, and contradictions are always interesting. Um, communicate. People will tell you, communicate, communicate. Be, you are your message, uh, you are your image. Be somebody before you do something. Huh? You know that. Huh? Say what you will do and you will do after. Okay, that's, that's kind of uh, existent. But suddenly, people need the truth. They don't want to, to be given some uh, uh, bad storytelling. So there is a tension between the obligation to communicate, to be on the social networks, and to give the, to give the, the priority to what you do. Your follower is not always your fan. It's every day, in this year you see it every day more and more. And to, maybe to, to sort of uh, um, overcome that kind of contradiction. Understand how communication works today, but put your job before. Uh, uh, the mastering of storytelling is a very important thing, but not without the piece, the truth, the product, uh, the real thing. It's not easy, but it's really fun. Thank you. <laughs>